Students, families, colleagues, and friends, good afternoon. On behalf of the Delta chapter of Phi Beta Kappa at Georgetown University in the District of Columbia, welcome to our annual initiation ceremony. We miss you, just as we miss the many ways we would ordinarily be celebrating your accomplishments at this time of year. The thesis presentations, art installations, triumphant experiment results, and capstone projects. These culminating academic experiences align with the mission of Phi Beta Kappa, which takes its name from the first three letters of the Greek motto, Philosophia Biu Kubernetes, love of learning is the guide of life. Though we are a community dispersed today, we come together as a community joined by a shared commitment to the life of the mind, freedom of expression, and academic inquiry. Phi Beta Kappa membership is widely recognized as the highest honor that can be conferred in recognition of academic distinction in the liberal arts. For more than 200 years, scholarship and good character have been the determining qualities for membership, and you are here today because you embody those very qualities. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the chapter officers. I'm Sue Lawrenson, Vice Dean of Undergraduate Education in Georgetown College and President of Georgetown's chapter. Later in the ceremony, you'll hear from Vice President Heidi Elmendorf, Associate Professor of Biology, and Second Secretary Jan LaRock, Associate Professor of Human Science. We also acknowledge our historian, Professor Doug McCabe of the McDonough School of Business in absentia. But first, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Robert Groves, Provost of Georgetown University. Thank you very much, Sue, and welcome. Welcome all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. But most importantly, congratulations, Phi Beta Kappa initiates. Welcome to one of the oldest intellectual societies in the US. I welcome both the graduating seniors and those junior initiates who might be viewing this ceremony. And a special welcome goes out to any family or friends who are joining us today. Many years ago, I was experiencing the same event you are now experiencing. So let me set the stage for the emotions that we should all be expressing right now. First, you should be proud of your accomplishments. You should be happy that your hard work has paid off so obviously. Your family should be proud of you. We. I can tell you are very proud you chose Georgetown to achieve your academic excellence. Phi Beta Kappa is a celebration of achievement within the liberal education framework. In that framework, we honor the sciences, the arts, and the humanities as necessary ingredients for personal fulfillment and leadership in our world. The breadth of education we pursue here at Georgetown is intentional. We understand that such breadth nurtures the necessary creativity to solve new problems, the skills at self-learning to teach yourself a new field, the empathy necessary for wisdom of choosing the most important problems, and the ability to communicate your knowledge effectively to large publics. By granting you admission into Phi Beta Kappa, the university notes that you have learned these lessons well. So congratulations. Our hope is that you use this knowledge and these skills to help us all create a better world. Phi Beta Kappa membership is an honor that you can claim throughout your life to commemorate the diligence of your studies and the academic success you've displayed. You and your family should be deeply proud. I send you all my best wishes, continued support, and above all, congratulations on all you've accomplished. Cheers to your success. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Provost Groves. According to Phi Beta Kappa documents dating from 1776, the president of the Alpha Chapter greeted initiates as follows. This society was founded by a few friends. At first, it was confined to a small number of very worthy students. 
They planted the scion from which has grown this tree that now buds forth before your eyes with blossoms of harmony and concord. It was engrafted on the stock of friendship in the soil of virtue and enriched by literature. To cherish it and keep it alive hath been the constant care of those members who have succeeded. You are about to become one of those tree tending successors. This induction ceremony carries a long tradition and thus it seems proper that initiates should know something of the history of the organization. The society you're joining today is almost as old as the United States of America. Phi Beta Kappa was founded on December 5th, 1776 by five students at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. The founders were serious minded young men and their meetings generally emphasized such literary exercises as composition and debate. However, it's worth noting that in those early years, the first Phi Beta Kappa chapter met in the Apollo Room of the Raleigh Tavern, which is William and Mary's equivalent of the tombs. So it seems safe to assume that those early meetings were both literary and convivial. Indeed, friendship, along with literature and morality, have from the beginning been one of the goals of the society, and they remain so today. The original Phi Beta Kappa chapter at William and Mary was temporarily put out of business by the Revolutionary War when the approach of the British Army under General Cornwallis forced the college to close its doors. However, the founding members had taken an important step in 1779 that kept Phi Beta Kappa alive in those dark days. They granted charters to fellow students at Harvard and Yale, which allowed them to establish their own branches of the society and they in turn granted charters to four more colleges over the course of the next 50 years. The original chapter at William and Mary came briefly back to life in 1851, but again was suspended due to activities in the Civil War and Reconstruction. Meanwhile, the six functioning chapters extended invitations to an additional 15 schools. So by 1883, there were a total of 21 chapters when they joined together for the first time to create a national organization, the United Chapters of Phi Beta Kappa. Since that date, new chapters have been admitted by a vote of the Triennial General Meeting of the National Organization, in each case only after an in-depth examination of the academic program at the candidate school. And that's what took place at Georgetown when our chapter, Delta of the District of Columbia, was founded in 1964. Membership was initially extended to students from the college and from the schools of foreign service and schools of languages and linguistics, the latter now part of the college. Today, students in the School of Nursing and Health Studies are also considered for membership. Over the years, Phi Beta Kappa has undergone a number of changes. It started out as a secret society with an oath requiring members, and I quote, to preserve inviolate the mysteries of what was then a very elaborate initiation ceremony. The secrecy gave members the freedom to engage in passionate debates on controversial topics like, was Brutus justified in killing Caesar? Is religion necessary in government? And what is the value of theater? The secrecy oath was abandoned in 1831 and the gesture of drawing two fingers across the lips to signify that your lips are sealed has all but disappeared. However, a form of the secret handshake has survived and looks something like this. It's so secret that it can only be discovered by Googling Phi Beta Kappa's secret handshake. Over the years, the society has grown exponentially. After 100 years, African Americans and women were finally invited to participate Yet we recognize there is still much work to be done for Phi Beta Kappa to appropriately recognize the breadth of academic excellence among our students. The number of chapters has grown to nearly 300 and total membership has expanded since 1900 from 10,000 to over half a million today. Equally important, Phi Beta Kappa has spread beyond college campuses with the creation of 50 associations of alumni members all around the country. You'll be in good company there. Members include 17 US presidents, 42 Supreme Court justices, and more than 150 Nobel laureates. To continue with your initiation, I'd now like to welcome our chapter secretary, Professor Jan LaRock. In accordance with the rules of this chapter, 
and in consequence of your record of high attainment in this university, you have been nominated for membership in Phi Beta Kappa. Your names have been submitted to the scrutiny of the constitutional electors of the chapter and have met with their approval. We will now present the class of 2021 inductees. Fatima al Mimai, Amelia Anderson. Gabrielle Angelini. Elizabeth Ash. Carrie Ashkenazi. Alan Balu. Natalie Bazada. Lucy Bimefor. Bianca Berman. Jack Burson. Lee Bianchi. Jonathan Bigler Lish. Natalie Capuzzo. Will Casu. Christopher Castaldi Muller. Sam Sharaf. Rose Chang. Irene Chun. Lindsay Clark. Timothy Cray. Gavin D'Souza. Sophia Damani. Milan Dolajal. Sila Dragic. Michelle Dubovitsky. Fallon Dwyer. Davud Paganian. Olivia Bagandini. Samantha Friedman. Laura Gallagher. Madeline Gibbons Shapiro. Maya Gibbs. Neil Getzman. Ethan Goldstein. Lydia Good. Maxim Guz. Hannah Greco. Gabriella Grossman. Sujum Ham. Sarem Hawk. Stacy Hartman. Dustin Hartuf. Marcella Hayes. Ziyu Hua. Benjamin Hoffner. Jack Horgan. Alexa Heater. Arslan Humayan. Margarita Ilagin. Talia Inbar. Maria Jensen. Catherine Jovanovsky. Ladon Kasrion. Caitlin Carney. Holly Keaton. Grace Keegan. Kathleen Kennedy Wood. Joy Kim. Yu Millie Kim. Young Yoon Kim. Jenna Kalodney. Camille Kurtz. Sarah Kurtzweil. Hannah Kushin. Karina Landler. Anna Landry. Evan Laugan. Catherine Lee. Quentin Levin. Hannah Levine. Myra Lewontin. Quanxin Lee. Peter Liu. Felipe Lobo Kuwich. Christina Lopez. Abigail Lovell. Marie Luca. Esther Luciano. Frederick Ludke. Amelia Luna. Eli Maniker. Elizabeth Marcinkowski. Jonathan Merrick. Emily Mazur. Elena Meal. Varsha Mainan. Joshua Metzger. 
Alexander Misner. Jake Moscarelli. Siddharth Machkal. Hyung Jun Nam. Nak Nyun. Eleanor Andek. Yanyon Pan. Anthony Panoshki. Georgia Payne. Duny Eliza Phillips. Kevin Polak. Irene Pronmod. Aiden Reed. Isabel Romer. Kevin Runfula. Bella Rib. Aditi Sanjay. Anna Schildmeyer. Samantha Schlageter. Ian Scharf. Nathaniel Shaw. Levan Shimavanyan. Maya Salardi. Rennie Simone. Rachel Singer. Morgan Smith. Henry Stanton. Eric Stebe. Joy Steenson. Maya Tenzer. Maximilian Thomas. Maureen Tibbetts. Molly Vensil. Gabrielle Valladolid. Kaylee Villani Stanzion. Natasha Vincent. Alexa Viola. Jushin Wang. Nicholas Weekel. Nathan Wecht. Linda Wen. Michaela Winner. Jonathan Wiersma. Ajayan Williamson. Ian Woods. Yishuan Wu. Brian Shu. Michael Yedibalian. Jushi Zhang. Zihu Zhang. Isabella Zimmerman. Anna Zolniak. The Society's requirements for membership are now fully satisfied. Therefore, in the presence of these members of the Society, I declare you to be members of the Delta Chapter of Phi Beta Kappa in the District of Columbia, authorize you to wear its key as a badge and to participate in its meetings. I'm sure you also look forward to practicing the secret handshake when public health conditions allow. One note for all in attendance here today. The Delta chapter also inducts a small percentage of each junior class, in this case, 31 students from the class of 2022. And we will invite those students to participate in the initiation ceremony next year. Let's now welcome our Vice President, Professor Heidi Elmendorf. The Lepgold Award honors Joseph S. Lepgold, a Georgetown government and School of Foreign Service professor who died tragically in a hotel fire in Paris in December 2001. Professor Lepgold's intellectual passions serve as a particular point of inspiration for this award. He was passionate about teaching and had been recognized through multiple teaching awards for his devotion to his students and their academic journeys at Georgetown. And he was passionate about his scholarship. Reflective of Georgetown's motto, people for others, that sought to bring together foreign policy academics and policy makers to have greater impact on real world challenges it is so appropriate that this award, one that supports students who likewise are committed to personal growth, scholarly excellence, and the common good, be named in honor of Joseph S. Lepgold. I've had the privilege of reading Lepgold applications for over a decade and find it to be a vibrant reminder of what makes Georgetown such a special place. For our applicants this year, an intellectual passion was often stoked 
not only by classroom experiences, but also by their lived experiences. They're keen to enter the world of political journalism using the wry insights of satire to better reach a broad audience in a divided nation. They are interested in international water management, seeking to work at the intersection of policy, the law, and science for the benefit of people around the world. They are passionate about disability rights, working to create a project to memorialize the founders of the disability rights and justice movements, to raise public consciousness, and to work against systemic injustices. They seek to elevate voices of minority activists, documenting their acts of performative activism and seeking to understand the manner in which they infuse acts of social justice with love. This year's awardee is undertaking the writing of a novel, Rapture, that brings to life themes of faith, religion, sexuality, queerness, the body, desire, and hunger. In the application, the student wrote, it is on the page that I first found freedom, when I was given the power to center myself in a world that often relegates me to the margins. For me, writing is a form of activism. The novel grew out of lived experiences, was fed by coursework in the African American Studies Department and a study abroad experience, and gestated as a senior thesis in the English Department. The award will be used to fund participation in the Gotham Writers Workshop, where a supportive community and collegial expertise await to help in the completion of a full first draft of the novel. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Joseph S. Lepgold Phi Beta Kappa Award, Duny Eliza Phillips. It is a tradition of the Jewish community that on the holiday of Sukkot, we bring together four species of flora and fauna, myrtle, willow, palm, and citrus, to represent four types of people. I like to think of it this way. Myrtle, with its tiny almond-shaped leaves evocative of the human eye, honors intellectuals and academics, those who observe and study the world and share inspiring visions of how to improve it. Willow whose lip-shaped leaves remind us of human mouths, honors those who raise their voices in song, and those who courageously speak difficult truths to power. Palm, with its solid, strong, spine-like leaves, honors those who put their very bodies in harm's way to protect, those who use their limbs to dance, who engage their strength and skill to construct our infrastructure and build and beautify our homes, our roads, our universities, and the like. Finally, the heart-shaped citron honors those who lead with their hearts, who lead with love, instinct, empathy, and a deep life-giving compassion for all. These four species always remind me of the words of my favorite songwriter, Cindy Callett, who reminds us, some lead with a vision and a strength of mind, some rise from trouble, some lend a hand, some keep trying to find. In Judaism, we join the species together and hold them up high in recognition that for humanity to thrive as a whole, we need each other and everyone's unique way of being in the world and distinct way of contributing to this world. And as the Talmud teaches, Ezahu Chacham, who is wise? One who learns from everyone. You are remarkable Phi Beta Kappa graduates, have clearly learned so much from so many and have so much to give back to all of us. So let us pray in your honor. Dear God, we are profoundly grateful for these 2021 Phi Beta Kappa graduates who you have blessed with vision and a strength of mind. Guide them with your good counsel to go forth from these gates physically and virtually to lead us all forward with the remarkable acuity and acumen with which you have so graciously gifted them. We offer thanks for their commitment and dedication to learning and we pray that learning be their constant companion throughout life and that they are ever gratified by it. 
As these graduates lead us forward, may they listen to those who rise from trouble, for through them wisdom comes, and from them justice will also rise. May they follow in the ways of those who lend a hand, for through them your divine blessing flows. May they join the ranks of the seekers, those who keep trying to find the most meaningful, ethical, holy ways to live out their lives, for for them joy is always close at hand. For our 2021 graduates, wherever life brings you, may you know that we are here for you with all our hearts. We have your backs with all our strength. And prayers will ever be on our lips that for you joy will always be close at hand. Baruch atah Adonai Hosei Hashalom. 2021 Phi Beta Kappa graduates, may you go in peace and may you bring peace wherever you go. It is customary to bring the ceremony of initiation to its conclusion with the words of the ritual of 1779. You all in this moment experience in yourselves the heartfelt satisfaction, which I do at this, our valuable acquisition. Friendship herself, pleased with her success, now smiles at this addition to our fraternity. Let it be our joint care to extend the friendship which has ever been exercised by the society to those new members that they may hereafter become veterans in her service. Thank you for being with us today and congratulations.